Ultra Multum Ile Eteris Yachtatus et Alto. We should us. she's becoming and all these weird changes in her body and how she's feeling. It's a part that's so like close to me and I think it's it's such an important story. I'm Kyle like, Segarra and I'm playing Moritz. He wants to connect with people and he doesn't really understand how. I'm Brian Black with a Y. I'm playing Milvio Gabula. He doesn't believe in the hierarchy that uh, exists above him. And so he's kind of going against the grain. Uh, what was the question? The first rehearsal, we did a read through where we spoke our spoken lines, but when we sang, we went in a circle and everybody <laughs> spoke a word of text, a, a line of text. That's right. That's We've right. been doing a lot of um, movement to help find different vocabulary for. Um, the songs, but through that it's really helped us find our different characters. It's a lot of ensemble-based movement work that's been really eye-opening and unexpected, really unexpected, in a good way. We've been doing a lot of character stuff with Rick, which is really, really great. Uh, I think it's definitely helping build our ensemble. Finding the truth of your character and then seeing how that truth relates to the other characters' truths. Getting really inside of who these people are and what it's like to be oppressed and what it's like to um, not be able to express your emotions, not being able to express what you need to express every day to survive. Yeah, what else did we design? Um, we've been doing kind of Williamson's so it's kind of like emotional, but slash viewpoints. It's, it's kind of like a combo of the two. We're just developing kind of a vocabulary for our characters right now, like a vocab like vocabulary of gestures. The movement rehearsals with Ken, where you just like, you know, gaze into someone's soul. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Approaching the text is one thing, but like bringing it to life is another entirely. It's not just these nasty teenagers jumping on stage. It's a pretty in depth process that we are still going through, but it's going to be awesome. I mean, I love the music. I'm really excited about the music. Mama, the weeping, mama, the angels, no sleep in heaven or Bethlehem. God, I dream there was an angel who could hear me through the wall as I cried out like Latin. This is so not It's very different from probably what they've seen before. There's no bad guys, there's no good guys. We're all just learning in this world that is so ignorant to everything. To everything, especially, especially to children. We're all kind of victims in this society during this time. The original play was written in 1891, and the fact that this is still relevant, I think, speaks volumes about how little progression we've made in certain areas. This story has the potential to reach those areas in your soul that maybe haven't been reached before. I mean, mostly we want to spark discussion. Yeah. Yeah, we really want people to leave and be talking about it. Awareness and communication. There are two things that need to be taken from this experience. We as humans are still animals, and we have very impulsive instincts that we need to embrace and enjoy and allow. This is a story of survival um, and what, what you have to do to survive. I hope that audiences will understand that, that there is, there's darkness inside of, inside of everybody and um, it's a matter of 
knowing that it's there, but always reaching for something better. Knowing that even though things could be really dark right now, um, later on, like you're, it's it, like it's 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 gonna get brighter. I definitely think it'll be a journey worth taking with the cast. Through pain comes light, and I think that that's the whole message of the Purple Summer.